the Nord Stream pipeline has been blown up. It has been sabotaged and Europe's fate has been sealed. Now, I'm not going to discuss who did it. I personally don't know who and I'll leave the speculation to you. But the die has been cast and there are economic consequences to be paid. We all know that Europe is in a terrible energy crisis. Prices are going up and people are going broke. And there was always a hope that Europe and Russia could reach some sort of arrangement somehow for gas supply before winter hits. But that is off the table now and this energy crisis has morphed into a serious emergency for the Eurozone. Remember that the Nord Stream is underwater, right? And the damage is extensive. And according to the operator, three offshore gas pipelines were damaged in a single day. And repairing them isn't easy. You need to either drag the pipelines out of the sea or do the repairs underwater, both of which are a bloody nightmare. And we have Russian sources saying that it could take at least six months to get the job done. And by then, Europe will be in the thick of winter. Now, I want to read some of the extreme measures that the EU is about to undertake to survive. Number one, they have agreed on an energy windfall tax. They are looking to raise 140 billion euros by taxing the hell out of energy companies that are making money, right? Fossil fuel extractors will be taxed at 33% of their surplus profits and the money will go to families and businesses. Now, that sounds great on paper. But do you think this will entice energy companies to invest more in the future or less? And number two, low-cost power generators like nuclear power plants will have to follow an electricity price cap of 180 euros per megawatt hour. And that means no generator can sell energy above that price to meet demand. And we can see that energy prices are well above 180 today with Germany's own electric bill at 250 euros per megawatt hour. So if you're running a capital intensive nuclear power plant and your cost of production is around 200, you'll be producing electricity at a loss of 20 euros. The gas power plants, they can sell it at 250, but you can only sell at 180 and eat a loss. You are now penalized for going green. And do you think this will increase or decrease the energy supply? And number three, there's now an EU-wide plan for compulsory power savings. And during peak hours, the electricity consumption will be cut by 5% and it will affect everyone. We are talking about households, companies, factories and public buildings. Do you think this will affect Europe's economy and its manufacturing capability? And winter is coming in a matter of months and with the Nord Stream pipeline down, there's no way out of this, guys. If there's any turning point to Europe's energy crisis, I think this is it, guys. This is it. And the problem with all these measures is that they are going against the free market. The EU is trying to rewrite the laws of gravity and hope everything pans out for them in the long term. But it won't. The cure to high prices is high prices, right? And according to Goldman Sachs, Europe's household electrical bills could rise by $2 trillion by next year. That's a 200% increase from 2021. And that's a lot of money and Germany is hurting the most. Their reliance on Russian gas is one of the highest in the Eurozone at over 40%. So Germany has essentially been pushed to the brink of collapse. We have the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz announcing a 200 billion euro package to shield Germans from surging electricity prices. And once again, this sounds great on the surface, right? But we need to dig deeper. The plan is going to introduce emergency breaks on gas prices and this means the sales tax on gas will drop to 7% from 19%. And this means Germany is actually opposing any price caps on gas imports. They don't want to limit their gas supply. They need energy and they know it, right? So their solution is to use the government balance sheet to absorb the losses. The German government is subsidizing energy prices for the general public. Now, this is causing a lot of friction within the EU, which wants to implement the import price caps. But Germany knows it won't work. But here's the important part. In order to raise the 200 billion euro, Germany will have to borrow the money. And in order to do that, they are lifting their debt ceiling. And this is not good news because interest rates are going to go up and Germany has just traded in short-term inflation for longer-term inflation, right? It is just kicking the can down the road. And in a way, Russia has pushed Europe into a wartime economy. Putin might be mobilizing troops, but the Eurozone is mobilizing its financial power to survive winter. And the most obvious sign is when governments are forced to nationalize energy companies to prevent bankruptcy. 
Now, a lot of people don't really understand why nationalization is so extreme and the deadly consequences down the road. And here's the short version. Because of the Russian gas shutoff, energy firms like Uniper are suffering horrible losses because they need to buy gas from elsewhere. Maybe it's from the Middle East, maybe it's from China, but they have to pay a lot more while their electricity prices are sold at a fixed low rate. So they are burning through money. And to keep the electricity flowing, governments like Germany have to throw money to nationalize energy companies, right? They had to bail out the company with a 15 billion euro rescue deal. Now, the nice way of saying this is calling it a move to secure the energy supply. And technically, that is correct. Because when a company is nationalized, it can use the country's balance sheet to defend itself, which is technically limitless, right? They can always print money. So here's the big danger and temptation. As winter hits, and if it gets cold enough, energy prices are going to spike. Remember, China isn't going to supply the Europeans with cheap gas. It is not a charity. They are going to jack prices up. The whole market will. And the Eurozone could start nationalizing energy companies and throw money at a situation with subsidies. And there are only two ways to do this. They can either go borrow money from the public or do debt monetization, which is printing money. Either way, the money supply is going to expand again and inflation isn't going to come down. If anything goes wrong with these companies, the government can keep bailing them out with money. Now, the inflation rate in the EU has risen to a record 10% in September and chances are it will stay high as winter arrives. And this brings us to the threat of rate hikes that are coming, right? We know two things. Inflation is soaring plus Europe has to keep spending money and in order to bring down inflation, you need to raise interest rates and pull demand away. Now, the EU is massively behind the eight ball when it comes to rate hikes, right? In the United States, the Fed funds rate is 3.25%, while inflation is 8.3%. So there's a 5% gap we are dealing with. It is big, but it's nothing compared to the EU. The ECB benchmark rate is only 0.75%, while inflation is double digits at 10%. The interest rates will have to go up. There's no other way to bring inflation down, especially when government spending won't stop. And this brings us to a daily situation where rate hikes are going to come amidst high spending. It's not as bad as the situation in the UK, but not good as well. Fiscal policy is at odds with monetary policy. Basically, the EU governments as a whole, they're spending money, which is inflationary, while the ECB is hiking rates, which will destroy demand and cause a recession. And we have Credit Suisse already saying the EU is in a recession. They stated, higher rates combined with ongoing shocks are leading us to cut GDP forecasts. The euro area and the UK are in recession. And if you combine this with persistently high inflation that won't come down, we are going to see Europe enter stagflation hell. The markets are going to get hit from all sides. So let's say you're living in Germany, you are going to be squeezed by inflation and high interest rates. Inflation in Germany is now at 10.9%, which is a 70-year high. The last time it was that high was back in the 1950s, just after World War II. And if you are a German, your purchasing power is going to go up in a fireball. Mortgage rates are even worse. Just back in February this year, mortgages were less than 1.5%. But now, we are looking at 3.8% at the very least. That's over twice the old rate. There are already hints that the German real estate market is in trouble. New mortgage agreements are down by 18%, the lowest they have ever been over the last few years. Now, all signs are pointing towards a recession and a bigger crash coming for Germany and the Eurozone as a whole. And this time, they can't backtrack and ask Russia for cheap energy. The era of cheap energy is more or less over for Europe. And this is why the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage is such a big deal, right? He has doomed Europe to a one-way trip into stagflation hell. And for Russia, it is like the last lifeline and connection to the euro has been symbolically cut off, right? There's nothing connecting them anymore. No shared interest or any last-minute negotiations. You can't even buy Russian gas if you want it. And this means both sides are probably going to go all out in this economic war. The last bargaining chip has been taken off the table. Remember, the price cap on Russian oil is going to happen sooner or later. And according to the European Commission of Sula, further sanctions are going to be imposed. She said, we are determined to make the Kremlin pay for this further escalation. She promised that a Russian oil price cap is coming to reduce Russia's revenues. And here's the thing, she only got half of the picture right. Yes, Russian revenues will come down, you'll take a hit. 
but Europe isn't going to pay a cheaper price for energy either. Russian oil is just going to reroute through the east and make its way back to the west at double the price. China's already selling LNG to Europe at a huge markup. Cheap LNG is flowing from Russia to China, so they have a healthy surplus supply to sell to the West. The same could happen with oil. The EU's victory will only be symbolic and the real economic winner will be China. Now, it's not all doom and gloom for all of Europe. There's one country that's insulated and doing relatively well, and that is Norway. They are now the biggest supplier of natural gas to Europe including the UK. And if we look at the Oslo index, Norway's markets are only down 1% year to date, which is an incredible victory in today's conditions. And now the new Baltic pipeline is open, allowing Norway to supply gas to Poland and the rest of Europe, but it won't be nearly enough to replace the old Russian supply. Before the Ukraine invasion, Norway's gas was only covering 20% of EU's demand, while Russia was handling 40%. It is impossible for Norway to triple their production in such a short period of time. But it will be enough to make Norway a very rich country. And the EU knows this and now they are asking Norway for price discounts. So in a sense, this is still a zero-sum game. The EU is still losing money. But countries like Norway and China, they are the ones who will be making tons of money from this energy crisis. So things are looking very bleak for the Eurozone and it's going to get worse. Now, if winter is kind, maybe they could get through in one piece. But if Mother Nature is especially brutal, then we could see the EU burn even more money to keep warm. So let's recap the facts for Europe. They no longer have access to cheap Russian gas for the foreseeable future. And this means their manufacturing capability will be hindered. It will cost more to build things in Europe and stuff will get more expensive. They'll be less competitive and their markets are going to take a hit. They might still have growth going forward but not as decent as before and with the eu governments using their balance sheet to defend against higher energy prices we are going to see inflation stay elevated for quite some time energy bills might not soar much further but everything else will and all this deficit spending to shield consumers is going to boomerang back and hurt the euro sooner or later the euro is already a disaster show down 13 percent it is below parity, which means a dollar is now worth more than a euro. And how low will it go? Well, if the Fed continues to hike rates and if the ECB keeps waiting, we could see the euro fall even lower against the dollar. But if they do tighten, it could very well send the eurozone into a deeper recession. This could also damage the currency because no one will want to invest in Europe at that point. Money will just flow into the reserve currency, which is the US dollar. And according to Goldman Sachs, the euro will weaken to 97 cents against the dollar and stay there for the next six months because of demand destruction. There's no turning back at this point. Europe's fate is most likely sealed at least for this upcoming winter. So let me know what you think. Can the eurozone pull off a miracle? Will there be a big scramble to quickly repair the Nord Stream pipelines? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.